Welcome back, everybody. I have a very awesome conversation for us today. Marcus, how are you feeling, brother? It's good to have you here. Feeling, feeling great today. Thanks, Austin. How are you? I'm good, man. I appreciate you asking. You got 60 degrees up in Chicago. I got 86 down here in Florida, so we're both happy. We've got beautiful weather as we head into quarter number two tomorrow. We're filming this Absolutely. right before we head into April. So I figured, Marcus, what we could do today is not only touch on the uh, current focus for you and the team at Market Replay Live. I'm going to link to your YouTube channel and all of your stuff down in the description so everybody can connect with you uh, on your socials. But I also want to get to know you a little bit more just because I think in some of your previous videos, you know, you always, like you had me on last week, you always go into mm -hmm. the guest. You don't really share a lot about yourself. So I figured let's get to know the man behind the camera a little bit more. So do me a favor. Take us back to when you first heard the word trading. How old were you? Where were you? And what went through your mind? When I first, so going back to when I first heard the word trading, I was 13 years old. And okay. I remember this day vividly because okay. my mom had walked into my room and she had given me this software CD about the stock market. And I didn't know it at the time because I didn't know what the stock market was. But I guess it was like one of these educational games that she had gotten from her job that was sure. designed to teach kids about how the stock market worked. And she said, you should use this. You should learn how to do this because it could make you a millionaire one day. Wow. And I was like this is great. Like I want to, how did your mom know that? How what was your mom doing before that? What was she doing with work? So my mom is a social worker by profession. Really? So she is. Yeah, I so thought you I were going to say like stockbroker or something like that. No, <laughs> no, she is a social worker. And uh, wow. so at the time she was working at, let's just say it was like a children's shelter. So kids sure. were like the award of a state. And I think what ended up happening was, you know, they routinely had people come in to talk to the kids, to donate to the kids. And I guess this was just one time where someone from the stock market had given everyone a CD and she grabbed one for me to take it home. And she had, she had shown it to me and she said, you know, this could ultimately make you a millionaire one day. So let's focus on this. And I tell you, I had no idea what the heck it was. Like in, after about a week or so, I was so frustrated that I put it down. Okay. So that's my first experience with the stock market. So that idea never left me though. And to be honest with you, like, cause my mom grew up single mom. Like my dad was there until maybe I was about 13 and then they separated. Okay. But the idea, I love my mom so much. The idea of me disappointing her bothered me for like 10 or 15 years. I can relate I, to that. I waited, like I picked it back up maybe like 10 years later. Cause I'm like somewhere in the back of my head. I was like, my you mom still had the same CD the stock market stuff. I don't have that same CD. I have oh, no I was idea. Say, you still is. have it. That'd be so yeah. funny. <laughs> I might even threw it away because I was so frustrated with it at the time. Right. But the, I, but the idea that I should probably learn the stock market never left me. And so in my 20s, I kind of dabbled. I did a little bit of trading with stocks and different things like that. Of course, we didn't have the tools that we have now, like, sure. you know, Robin Hood and those other things. I think I was maybe using like E Trade or something at the time. Right, Remember right. that commercial with the E Trade baby? Of so course. Like, E-Trade at the time, I think was something that I was interested in, um, but really still didn't know what I was doing. But like, yeah. now let's cut to 2018, which I okay. think is kind of getting to the meat of what you're, what you're asking me, yeah. which is when I ultimately got serious about yes. it. So that was my next 20, question. So 2018, I get caught up in the Bitcoin craze. As okay. everyone was, Bitcoin was going crazy at the time. Okay. And I, I took some money and I invested in Bitcoin. And so... It was exciting to me because this was the first time that I really got into an investment that I had seen like the first couple of days in the first weeks or two that I was actually making money, like the value of it was increasing. Of course. But then I guess I kind of got in at the top. So at that point, it had lost maybe 15 to 20 percent of its value like three yep. weeks later. And yep. I was like, well, this is stupid. And the, the idea that flashed in my mind was this. OK, so I know how I can make money when Bitcoin is going up. But like if it's going down. What I can I do? Like, there's got to right. be an opportunity to make money in that sort of way. Right. And so in doing research online, I actually uh, found that there was a, a company called Nadex, which is a North American I've heard of Nadex. exchange. Yep. Right. So literally, I live, in, I live in the loft in downtown Chicago. Nadex is literally six blocks right there. away from me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like right there. So um, Nadex, I saw that they had Bitcoin futures. And that gave me the ability. And the way that I saw YouTube ad and the advertisers, you can make money if Bitcoin is going up or down. I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I looked into Nadex and I saw that they gave you like a $25,000 paper money account or something yep. like that yep. to learn how to trade Bitcoin futures. And so I was doing that. I was learning how to trade Bitcoin, but it wasn't 
it wasn't really working out the way I thought it was. But inside of Nadex, though, I saw that they did other things. So they did traditional features. So they did like, you know, NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, the Dow. They got they your oil, beak wet a gold. little bit. You, were, you got in. This was like your toe right. in the water with the Bitcoin futures. And then right. it like led you to saying, oh, my God, there's so many other assets that I could be investing exactly. in. What didn't you so like about the Bitcoin futures before you go on? So there wasn't, there wasn't enough liquidity in it was the basic thing. So, you know, you didn't have enough there wasn't enough action for you to be able to see the price. Especially move. as you go into 2019 and, and into like 2018, 2019 and early Absolutely. 2020 before it picked up, it, it was quiet. Nobody was talking about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And so what, what they had on Nadex was Nadex, you were able to trade the weeklies, but you couldn't do dailies. And then also mm. with Nadex, you can do like two hours in terms of your options. I've heard contracts. about those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I was noticing was that in these other instruments, there was a lot more liquidity there was a lot more volatility, which led to more opportunities to make money. And so I saw that and I was like, okay, Bitcoin is one thing, but let me look at what this actual futures thing is. Cause I hadn't even heard of futures before sure. really. Um, but okay. So then flash forward to, I had that $25,000 paper money account cut mm -hmm. to 18 months later. I've grown that account to $13 million. Now so you're like, it's paper I can money. do this, right? It's paper yeah, money, but you're feeling money. good. You're feeling good. Yes. But I figured out a strategy from trial and error. Okay, this is something that I can really do. So then I took that money that I had in my Bitcoin, took it out, put it into Nadex, and then applied the same thing that I was using in Sim to actual live money and been doing it ever since. So now trading is like my full-time income. I don't have any sort of side hustles That's or awesome. anything. That's else. awesome. That's awesome. This is what I do now. I feel like what you did there is so um... – in alignment with the way that I've explained it to people as far as like how to get into trading. I, I tell them it's three simple steps. You got to get educated. You got to find a system. You, your case was trial and error. I'm sure you were watching videos or you were studying something else, of course. like reading books, supplementary content. Yep. Step two is then paper money, test that system, tweak it, figure out exactly what you're doing on a repeatable basis, and then go in with the live money. I'm sure yep. if we, again, we'll fast forward a little bit into your story, but now you're coaching other traders. And I'm sure you mm -hmm. see a lot of people skip around that three-step process and maybe skip step one. And sometimes they skip step one and step two, and they literally just take hard-earned cash, you know, a thousand dollar iPhone, yep. they take their thousand dollars, they put it into the market and they just think that they're going to make money. So yeah. before we get into those details, because I want to talk about that, why that happens. And I want to know your experience with the guys you coached. Where mm -hmm. did you transition and what prompted you to start sharing your journey online and start communicating with other traders in the, in, in the online community? Sure. So, I mean, a, a lot of it was, you know, people asking me, so me t talking to my friends about kind of what I'm doing. and then Same thing for me, man. That's so funny. Like, Same thing. You know, and they're like kind of what, yeah. what is going on? What's happening yep. here? So that was a big catalyst for why I decided to kind of be more public about what it was that I was doing. But yeah. the, the big, the biggest thing though, and the reason that had me start my podcast in the first place, which I think is a big reason why, you know, you started ASF, ASFX and things that you do is like building a community around trading. It's such a, terrible thing to be on a lonely island as a trader. And the big question that I was trying to solve or the big thing that I was trying to do with the Market Replay Live podcast was this. You can find so much content right now on YouTube, on Facebook, oh on many other places man, about so trading. Much. You know, but the, the number one issue that I have with most trading videos that you find online is what I call hindsight bias. Meaning that they're giving you an explanation of why something is working when they see the whole damn trade from beginning right. to end. But right. when you're in an actual trade, you are dealing with incomplete information. So of you course. don't see the future. So any analysis, any anything that you're going to give me explaining to me why a trade works when you see the beginning, the middle, and the end is not going to be sufficient for when I am actually in a trade and I don't have the rest of what's on the right side of that bar. And so what I wanted to do is to kind of give traders an opportunity, successful traders an opportunity to put themselves in a position where they are explaining what they're doing, but they're doing it in such a way where they are using that incomplete information. One is going to help the audience to see that one traders, the, the traders who are successful actually know what they're talking about. So they're putting their money where their mouth is, which is incredibly sure. important. But then two, it also provides insight to the person that's watching because they don't just see the explanation. They see the decision-making process, the emotions, the doubts, they see everything. And that, what I call metadata, is so much more important to somebody who's learning how to trade than just the fact I should enter here. It wiggled a little bit and then it went to my exit point. Right, right, right. 
That's so well said, man. And I think you you got me thinking here a little bit. So on my YouTube channel, my older videos, when I started, we really took YouTube seriously, like 2019. Um, mm -hmm. I, what I would do was basically, cause at that time still, but at that time, vlogging was a big thing, you know, vloggers mm -hmm. and sharing their, so I kind of applied the vlogger mindset into my trading. So what I would do is like, I start at 5 AM and I go till like 10, 11 AM, right? Mm -hmm. at five, I'll turn the camera on for a second, say, this is what I'm looking mm -hmm. at. This is what I'm looking at. I'll talk to you guys in an hour. And then I would come yep. back and I would film again in an hour. Hey, I'm taking a position right here, right now. This is why I'm doing it. And then I would come back in an hour. And those trade recaps have done better for me over the long run than some of my newer ones where honestly, I've slacked off in doing that. So now you've got me motivated. Maybe I need to get back and doing that just to show people that there isn't hindsight bias in what I'm doing at least. And yeah. like you said, there is a lot of analysis out there. I, we don't need to go into this, but there's like some of these guys, man, especially in Forex. I mean, it's in day trading in general, but in Forex, like these guys like, showing a 25 minute video of their cars and their no disrespect, it's sure. a small little house. Like they think they're living a lifestyle, but they're not really, they're trying to sell it to people on the internet. Then you get to the end of the video and they're doing technical analysis and they're like, yeah, here's a double bottom. I would buy it here. My stop. It's like all mm. hindsight bias, all hindsight bias, mm. no systematic, no proprietary information, nothing that we're talking about. So I think like you said, it is rampant. So now as you've transitioned, so you started sharing this stuff online a little bit, like I can definitely relate to that. People are asking you about it. Yo, Marcus, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, let me in on this. I want to get to know what then transitioned from, okay, I'm going to talk about this to no, I'm going to take this serious and I'm going to get other traders on my podcast and I'm going to take this YouTube thing serious and I'm going to build a business off of this. When did that actually occur? Sure. I mean, the, well, in life, I'm a serious person. So if I'm a good, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do I'm it to do the it. point where yep. I want to be successful, you know, because yep. how you do anything is how you do everything. So when I decided that I wanted to do it, there was no kind of stopping me. I was going to be serious about I it. Love that. Um, yep. But for me, I, I will take it seriously. But at the same time, it was just, it was me just wanting to have conversations with other traders. I wasn't really kind of going that deep with it. I wanted to just be able to have an opportunity for me to sit down and ask people who I admire great questions and for me to learn on my own about it and just you're a constant so student man that's why yes. i think you're that's why i think i've related to your content a lot is because we both are always willing to learn from anybody i think that is mm -hmm. like one of the greatest skills that i and you have and we got to hold on to that is that like be the dumbest guy in the room and even when you're not be willing to look at the dumb people around you and say what can i still learn from you even if it's what not to do you know what i mean Absolutely. And so that's just the approach that I took with the podcast. Just, I love that. These are people who I want to be friends with anyway, who I want to learn from. And I just am happy to have a forum that I can also share it with other people. But I was doing these interviews offline before I ever took them to YouTube. Just so. to have the conversations, just to have mm -hmm. the conversation and build the community. So t tell me about some of the common, um, I don't want to call them issues, but for easy words, we'll call them issues that you see in the traders that you're coaching now. Because as you're starting to share your uh, methodology, your process of understanding, your way of analyzing a chart and understanding price and asset valuation and whatever, if it's future markets and, you know, the futures contracts or the mm -hmm. options contracts, whatever it may be, what are you seeing? Because mm -hmm. I know when we talked in our other video, you said um, a lot of what you're doing is not on the technical side of the trading stuff. Mm -hmm. It's more on the psychological. So tell us yes. about some of the psychological commonalities that hold traders back in your opinion. Sure. So, so what I do is, is not just more on the psychological side. It's almost exclusively on the psychology of trading. I'm, I'm really method agnostic. So you could be, you can have your own system. You can have another system. You can trade Forex. You can trade options. You can trade stocks. Like the, the psychological issues that we all go through as traders are pretty universal. Like we're sure. all kind of dealing with the same sort of things. It's so and funny, so, right? We think we're special, but in reality, we're not that special because we all got yeah. the same problems. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's human nature though. Like we right. all believe that, you know, we're different, we're unique right. because, you know, we look different, but right. once you really get down to the core of everything and, and I remember talking with you offline and your lady, she's psychology based, so she can tell you we're all pretty similar. You know what I mean? Yep. Like we all want the same things. We all want to be happy. We all want to provide for our family. That's it. We all want to stress less. We all want to look good naked. You know what I mean? So like exactly. we're all pretty much the same people. And right. so just having that sort of conversation with, with traders, it's 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 uh revealing to them and it's also it takes a lot of stress off of them to realize that okay my situation is unique like this actually happens with all sorts of traders so there is a solution for me um okay. but to get to your question yeah. the the most common issue that all traders are having is 
em- having too much emotion with their trading decisions. That's right. the biggest one. That's 80% of the issue is that you allow your emotions to get in the way of your trading decisions. Even if you have a mechanical system, even if you have an auto trading system, I deal with all different types of traders that trade in all different types of ways. And it does not matter the, the system that you have if the system that is in your mind allows it's you broke. to throw that system out right. because you're dealing with your emotions. You know what right. I mean? 100%. And so the number, one, the number one thing, and there are a lot of things that we do in terms of the psychology practice that we have in terms of coaching traders, but the number one thing that we try to make sure that we achieve is to help traders begin to divorce the emotion from their trading decision. Because if you can do that, that will level up your profits in ways that you would not believe for a number of different reasons. One, it allows you to stick to a system that you trust, which is incredibly important. But then two, trading is ebbs and flows. There will be wins, there will be losses, but most of the major mistakes and executions come not when you're winning, but when you're losing. Of course, moving a stop loss, not closing the trade fast enough, doubling back in if you're losing, right. Yes, so many issues come up especially if your first trade of the day is a loss, then all of the plans you had just went out the window because no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. It's like you're on an airplane and the top of the airplane blows off and you have no idea what to do. Yes. So being able to help them to stay in the pocket, I would say, while you're trading, even when you lose and not to allow your emotions to get in the way is the big thing that that we help traders to get past because if you don't do that one thing, no trading system, no nothing else is going to ultimately help you with that. Uh, then the second thing that I would say that we help yeah. traders with, so the next most common thing is um, having too many contracts on, like putting on too much Too much size. It was, yeah, too much size. In it one was. position or across the market in total? Like too much risk both. exposure overall? Yeah, both. both. Yeah. You know and I mean? is that based so, in greed, based in fear, fear of f- lack of future opportunities because they're short-sighted, fear of not making enough money in the short term as much as they want? Is that where that yeah. comes from? That's what I would say. It runs runs a spectrum. You know what I mean? Like whatever reason you have for fear and greed is going to be your own, but we know it's going to be fear or greed for one of those reasons. And so the idea behind what we do is to help you identify why you're making the mistake in the first place. And once you go, oh, know yourself a little better. Yeah. Then we can begin to introduce things to you that can help you to change it. But as you know, from both trading and in life, you can, you can see clearly an issue with someone, but unless they see it for themselves and when they don't even to change see it, it, you can't even tell them that there's an issue because yeah. they won't There's no listen. advice that I will ever be able to give you that you're going to listen to. My dad told me when I was dating this girl in high school, he's like, bro, you're not going to marry this girl. And I was dead certain he was wrong. I was like, I'm being with this girl forever, bro. What are you talking about? He was, he yeah. was hundred percent right. You know, but I didn't yeah. know that lesson from him until I lived it myself. That's my, my analogy. I got a question yeah. for you. You got me thinking here. Mm-hmm. Is consistency a myth in trading? Is that impossible? Or do you think it is possible? No, it it is very possible. I believe that, I think people just have a a misconception of what they believe consistency is. For people that don't have it, for people that don't have it, they believe consistently, consistency means that you never lose a trade. Exactly. The best traders lose all the time. So, I mean, and, and again, I'm, Again, I've interviewed billionaire traders with a B. Yep. They still lose money. The, of course. What you must understand is that the big thing that the successful traders do, the most successful traders do that some that are up and coming don't, is they think in terms of systems. So it's not one trade that they're worried about. It's am I profitable over 10 trades? Am I profitable yeah. over 50 trades? Am I, pop, am I profitable over the next 100 trades? I love okay. That. And if yeah. I am profitable over all of those, then I'm profitable overall. So consistency really means for those who, who truly understand it, that I'm thinking in a series of trades, which means I'm not putting on so many contracts on any individual trade that if I do lose one, I'm then in danger I can't get of to number nine. Account. Exactly. Exactly. Look you at know, that. So, Look at the container ship that was stuck in the canal over the last week, yeah. right? You had some of these, you had like four or 500 ships that could not cross. Those companies are going to lose something, whether the food in the containers goes bad, there was livestock mm-hmm. that was waiting. There's going to be losses, if not just because of the time, just because uh, things die and, and like food goes bad, right? 
Do you yeah. think that those companies just abandoned it, said, screw the whole ship, don't even deliver it? You think that they said, we're going to change our routes completely? And here's a really good example. Some of these ships rerouted under South America or under South Africa, under the, the Horn of Africa. So you go down, mm -hmm. instead of going through Egypt, they go all the way around and it takes 10 more days. So all those ships that saw the canal blocked, say three days ago, right before, because it, it got loose yesterday, Monday, because of the high tides. For all those people that made a quick decision and said, you know what, we're going to just take the long way around. They're actually going to take more of a loss now because it's going to take them longer. It's going to be more expensive. And then it's still going to be late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus the people that stuck through, maybe in our example here, stayed on system, took the loss of the small delay in the Suez Canal. And they just said, cool, when it opens back up, we're sending our ships through, boom, 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 keep it moving. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's such an easy example to talk about when we talk about taking losses. But in trading, because there's money involved, it's very difficult for people to accept the losses when they're given. And again, we, let's just put aside the idea that they're oversized. So those losses, let's just say for this conversation, mm -hmm. they're not bigger than they need to be. Let's just say you're taking normal losses. Even still, I find it hard for a lot of people to accept those losses. So what are some of the tactics that you've given people to overcome that fear of, or not even fear, let's just call it lack of, call it foresight, call it future vision, call it a, a, a system-based approach, whatever you'd like to call it. What are tactics that you're giving people to, f to get better in that area? Sure. So we focus on two major areas. First okay. area, education. Second area is exercises. Um, if you don't mind, if I can just take a two kind of minute aside to kind of yeah. explain how we work so that the rest of this stuff kind of makes sense. Please. Okay. So we had had this conversation offline, but for folks that haven't heard this and, uh, Sorry, Austin, and I'm going to be repeating it, but for those who are listening, did you know that you live eight seconds in the past? And so what I'm talking about here is not hyperbole. Like you literally live eight seconds in the past. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So in 2008, there was an article released in Nature that and it was an experiment done by the Max Planck Institute. Now, Max Planck being the Nobel Prize winning physicist, he has the number one brain research institute in the world based in Germany. At the Max Planck Institute, they did a research study, and here's how the study went. They hooked individuals up to an EEG machine, and they were giving them two images, right? One image was on the left, one image was on the, was on the right. They had to choose which image they preferred. With this EEG machine, the experimenters were able to tell eight seconds before the actual person being experimented on decided what image they were going to choose. Now, they didn't get it right every single time, but they did get it right with, with statistical significance, meaning that they had a method of being able to determine what choice you were going to make eight seconds before you were conscious of even making it. It's wild. Imagine that. It's wild. I, dude, I, when you told me that from our previous conversation, I shared that with like three other people. I was like, go look it up. I promise you, because I looked it up. I was like, that shit is real. You got to check that it's out. A very, it's but wait, a very tell, real thing. What was, there was a second study, right? Yes. So there's a second study, and this study applies more to traders. And so you can understand what's happening with you when you sit down to trade. Okay. So the second experiment was instead of them showing a left and a right image and telling them to choose, there were still two images, but one image was going to be a scary one, and the other one was going to be a happy one, okay? And they hooked these two images, the two different choices, up to, an, to a random number generator, which means the experimenter didn't know, the person being experimented right. on, no one knew what image you were going to see next. But still, they had them hooked up to this EEG machine. And guess what? Your brain started, the, their brain started responding eight seconds before they were even shown an image. And the, and the prediction that they were getting was right, again, with the level of statistical significance. It wasn't right every time, but it sure. was right enough for them to be able to reliably know what image was going to come up next. Okay, so, so what, how do we apply that into our trading? Yes. First of all, what I'm telling you right now, yeah. if you haven't put the pieces together, is that your brain has the ability to be able to predict the future. Let's start there that eight seconds before you're even consciously aware of anything, your brain already knows what's going to happen. That is wild within itself. It is. But then the second aspect of that is the big takeaway from this is that because your brain operates essentially in the future, it then gives you that information and it convinces you that you are the one 
that is deciding these things. When that hmm. information is actually being given to you by a deeper part of you, that you then become conscious of. So for everyone who's listening to me that thinks that you are in control of your own fate, you are deciding your own actions, you are deciding when you're going to enter a trade, exit a trade, these sorts of are. things that you think you are, but you are not. Wow. Okay. And so here's, here's why this is important. And this is why it applies directly to traders. If you don't understand that you are not the one that's in control of your trading, then you are going to keep making the same mistakes that you are making because you believe that it's a conscious choice. Yeah. What you must understand is there is no amount of chart reading, back testing, YouTube videos that you can watch or anything that's going to change this deeper part of you because that part of you does not communicate in the language that you communicate in. It understands English, but it doesn't communicate in English. Hmm. It communicates in a completely different way altogether. In what frequency? Is that where that's coming from? Some, so that... it, 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 it communicates in a number of different ways. The number one way that your, what I, what I call like your other than conscious mind, your deep part of you communicates is in experiences. So mm. it's going to provide experiences for you, for you to be able to learn lessons. And that's why so many times we can think positively all day long. Like people tell you have positive thoughts, but that doesn't change the actual experiences you have because right. the experiences are deeper. Second, it communicates in visuals. So thoughts, picture, images that come sure, into your mind. Sure. Those things um, are second in terms of where it ultimately gets it from. And then third and deeper down the line is actual words, which is what we try to use and what everybody right. else teaches you wow. that you should learn is use your words, repeat affirmations, say the words out loud, write them down, those sorts sure, of things. Sure. It, it's never been enough. And anybody who's ever tried it knows that it's not it's enough not for you enough. to ultimately be able to change. There's another way that you will be able to do it. And so with my coaching program, what we do is we systematically give you a protocol that is proven to change the way you think about trading. That deeper part of you changes and not just on the surface level. Is the it idea to not be scared of those – I didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm sorry. No, no. Is it is, is its idea here like – don't be scared of this point that your brain isn't making the decisions, that something is tricking you to think you're making the decisions, but really it's being given to you. You're saying, don't be scared of that. Embrace that because if you're aware of that, then you know your human DNA is going to kick in and try to make you be emotional and try to get you off your edge. But that awareness of that can actually keep you on the edge. Is that basically what you're saying? Yes. It, it's counterintuitive because especially mm. talking to Americans, Sure. Because we live in this free will, um, right. freedom is our first right. amendment, you know what I mean? And so the idea that we aren't in control. It's a of little tougher. I could see for some people, right, right. They'd yeah, be like, it's, eh. it's tough. especially religious people, they'd be like, eh. right. Yeah, it's tough for people to accept. Right. But the science is telling you otherwise. I like science, and man. So, I, I'm science and math. The universe, yes. like you have to ask, right? Did, was math created or was math invented, right? Like there's yeah. hard facts in the universe that you cannot argue. And this is absolutely at least this stu these studies have shown that it's one of them. I don't want to get too far away from your coaching program. I know that sure. we have a special link for everybody in the description um, where people can go and take one of these assessments. Can you kind of explain that to everybody? Just because sure. I know we're going to get some interest in this and I want to make sure they do it correctly. Sure, no problem. So yeah. one of the first things that we do is that we help you to be able to see for yourself what's going on with you. Again, I'm just a guy. I'm a trader. I'm successful at what I do. Um, I'm successful at helping other people. But as we know in this day and age, I mean, there's so much crap that's peddled out here that you want to be able to discover for yourself what's happening with you. And so what we have is this assessment that, again, is, is based on solid research that's going to allow you to see what your current gaps are in your trading psychology. So this isn't some guy telling you, based on sure. the answer that you give, you are seeing what you are currently struggling it's with. It's like a mirror, you're, you're showing them a mirror. Them. Exactly. So with that, you can then determine what you want to do with that. If you just want to be happy with the, with the mistakes that you're making, that's perfectly fine. But then there are also things that there are suggestions that you can that are given to you inside of the actual assessment itself on how you can begin to make those shifts and, and ultimately be able to change them. So the assessment, it's I'm not going to lie to you, it's difficult. Very few people pass it the first time because very few people are are aware of the actual psychological blind spots that they have when it comes to their trading. But now that you've said that, you life. know, all the alphas that are watching this are going to be like, what did he say? Most people can't do it. I'm doing it. You know that, Go right? That's it. what they're going to yeah. do. <laughs> and that's fine. And there are so many alpha traders and I get I it. Know. If you can I pass it. it the first time, more power to you, but I'm telling sure. you, most people don't. 
but right. that's okay though because yeah. what this is designed to do is to show you what's missing within you and if you know what's missing then we can fill in the holes like i know how to fill in the holes so right. it doesn't it it doesn't necessarily make sense for you to even try too hard to pass a thing in the first place because just be honest with yourself honest, and then based right. on that honesty we know what areas we can work on but if you're going to come in with this you know with this rah rah attitude that you are, I'm gonna pass the test. You are. I ain't got no failures, yeah, dude. Anybody that has that mindset is never gonna make it in trading. If you think you can't yeah. lose and you're not gonna fail, you're never gonna make it in, in this business. So I learned, I learned long ago never to argue with people's opinions because they are theirs and they will hold yeah. on to them, you yeah. know, for as long as they will. So that's why I like that. I have a data driven approach. Again, I'm, this is not my opinion. These are facts that we're looking right. at, and if you I don't want to change those facts, then that's okay but at least I want to be able to present the real data and information to you. What do you think has been the greatest um, eye opener to you on the coaching side mm -hmm. as you put people through this assessment and as you put people through the program that comes after the assessment, what is the mm -hmm. biggest eye opener to you? What have you seen and been like, Oh my God, I never would have thought that. So outside of just a change in your trading habits and your okay. behavior, which, okay. you know, people who come to me, I mean, they come from all different walks of life. So there are, you know, traders who are making a lot of money, but they want to be able to level up or they have some sort of issues that they want to tweak. So those sure. people are great. But then they're, on the flip side, there are people that, you know, they tell me no matter what they've tried, no matter what they've done, I'm still losing money, you know, and I don't know what to do to change it. And it's pretty And you look at them and you go, it's you. You're the problem, not the system. <laughs> I... I try not to judge as best as of I course. can. You of know course. what I mean? Like I put myself in a situation where I'm like, look, I, I have a system the same way that traders have a system that they trust. I have a system that I trust, that I believe, and that I know will help you to change whatever your issue is. So for me, the biggest things that I've appreciated about going through this program is just seeing not only the, the, the 180 sometimes degree shift in people's trading performance, but for them also seeing that oh wait this is actually changing my life as well because Outside remember how you do yeah because how you do anything is how you do everything and so that. what you what a lot of people realize is that it's the other stuff that's going on in their life that is contributing to their issues with trading and so in order to fix your trading this thing that we're doing fixes the other stuff too you yeah. know what i mean so like yeah. the, the 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 exercises and the protocols that we have aren't specifically designed for traders we've customized it to make sure that your trading is optimal but sure. it helps in so it's, many other it's areas bigger than that to. it's way bigger than that yeah it's way yeah. it's so much larger than that but talking to traders we just want to make sure that look this is the issue that you have you think it's an issue with profitability you think right. it's an issue with not knowing where your entries and your exits are supposed to be you think it's an issue where you know i just got to do one or two more things and then i can be consistent but then we can actually go and get to the bottom of it and and genuinely help you like help you help right. you and that's what, what i appreciate the most do you find or like are you in the boat that um and that was a great answer, by the way. Do you feel that most people could trade any trading system or does the system have to align with their beliefs? And I think what it seems like is that you're helping people get very clear on who they are and their beliefs about trading and their beliefs about the market. And then when they align with those beliefs in, in action, then they can find a system that aligns with them as well. And then they trade that system better. Is that basically how this whole comes sure. together? Now, you know, to be honest with you, I don't mm -hmm. know if I, if I would be able to really answer that question. And I'll tell you why. Okay. The, the way that we handle our coaching sessions now is a lot of times we work with traders like you who already have a group of people. And so they have already been introduced to a system and we help them with the psychology. And so I feel like that makes your job so much easier. Yeah. But at the same time, <clears throat> what I'm, my point that I'm trying to make is yeah. that we are very careful as to not promote any sort of trading method. Sure. Because whatever method you're using, we can help you to optimize it. And so sure. we really haven't done that much work in terms of 
okay, we'll try this different system. Now, of course, people ask, you know, people may be doing bonds and they want to switch to futures and they want to switch sure. to options and we'll be able to point them in that general direction. But right. For the most part, but when it comes down to like the to entry us, exit, they're not coming to you for that. They're coming to you. Yeah. I already got my system. I need to get my psychology. I right. like this system. It aligns with me already. I need to lock yeah. this down. No, that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So going forward into the rest of this year, what exciting projects do you and Market Replay Live, I know you got a little team going over there. What's, what's yeah. coming next? What's, what's, what do we have to look forward to? Yeah. So our, our big, our number one goal is that we want to continue to push the podcast forward. Sure. We want to make sure that we can continue to interview as many successful traders as possible so that folks can get an idea that the most successful traders, man, we they aren't superheroes. Most of no. most of the most successful traders in the world, believe it or not, are nerds. Like they're really boring people. You know what yeah. I mean? But like to yeah. get an understanding that success in trading, this isn't a casino. Like there right. is there is a real method to the madness. And for you to be able to see the human side of these people that we mit that we uh like we mystify and think that they are just these beyond my characters so to be like that like bobby these... axelrod looking motherfuckers from exactly. billions right <laughs> and so to be able to 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 see that these folks are human and to see the things that make them tick and to understand that they make mistakes as well if there is nothing else for an up-and-coming trader to understand is that it's this the best traders in the world still only win six out of ten of their trades okay so don't right. think this is a situation where you have to be perfect and if right. you're seeking perfection or you're seeking some trading system that is going to make you perfect, it's not going to happen. There is no holy grail trading system. In fact, they focus on other areas like thinking in probabilities, thinking in systems, yep. getting their emotions in check and focusing on execution rather than focusing on their particular profit and loss on any given day. So to be able to continue to hammer that message home with the people the we goal. interview in the podcast is the goal. So that's one. Then two on the coaching side, is yeah. we want to be able to provide more of a service with what it is that we're doing now. Now, don't get me wrong. What we're doing with our, with our current 30-day challenge that we have right now is genuinely changing thousands of traders' lives. And, there, and there's, there's resources that I want to be able to give out to your people for free, absolutely, just so that they can see that this stuff works. You know what I mean? And I'm not just saying it, that it can genuinely change them. Yeah. But on, on the flip side of that, though, we're working on the back end. So one of the new products or one of the new services that we're going to come out with is boom. We're going to say, Hey, spit out all your trades. Give me, hit the export button on whatever trading thing that you use. We're going to put it into our machine learning algorithm and we're going to see what are the best times of day that you should trade. When That's do you awesome. take the most losses? What are the best setups that you have? That's Those awesome. sorts of things. You what know, assets so do you trade the best? All that long yeah, or short. So that, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you absolutely know where your own personal edge is. Not with the edge of, the, of Austin, not your right. mentor, right. not what people are telling you right. that you should be doing, but what do you where specifically you, yeah. do well and like how that. can we optimize that? So That's we're cool. going to put that together on top of the, the psychological optimization things that we're doing. So that's, that's awesome. next in the pipeline. I like that. Who do you have any big names lined up for any interviews coming up? We do have some names, uh, not all of the names are confirmed yet. So just so you're like, let me the podcast. You see. Exactly. So everybody make sure you go to the link in the description and yeah. subscribe. So that way you can stay up to date with Marcus. But listen, man, this has been a great uh, 40 minute conversation. I want to wrap us up with one final thought here. If you mm -hmm. could go back to when you first started trading, not the 13 year old Marcus, we'll go to the yep. 2018 getting serious, the Bitcoin stuff. What's the yep. one piece of psychological advice that you would give yourself in that moment? Um, don't, don't trade so many damn contracts. <laughs> That's it. Don't oversize. Would, yeah. Don't oversize. That would be the big thing. Find that better trades and focus on them, not spread so thin. Yeah. Because, because even trading that large size gave me unrealistic expectations of what to expect because I didn't always lose. Like I right. won sometimes. So I right. have to see $2,000 days, $2,500 days and go, I didn't make this in a month, like two right. years ago. You know right. I mean? So you're I'm like, this the like, expectation is so high yes, because of the size minutes. that you were trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you had to tone it back into proper risk management. Absolutely. Because I lost that much in that amount of time as well. And that got me in a whole bunch of trouble as well. Because once, you know, 
once I really got serious about it and put myself in the situation, like I was in, I lost some money too that, you know, set me back for a while. So I don't want this to be a situation where like, oh, my whole trading career was, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Nobody's is. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, there was a huge learning curve. So if I could talk to that guy back then, I would just say to just to be patient, to to understand my systems and probability level of thinking that I have now that I approach to trading, which is, can I be profitable over these next 10 trades? Can I reduce the amount of size so that even if, you know, three or four of these trades don't work out, I'm still profitable overall. And these two trades didn't just wipe out all the profit that I just had over the right. last 72 hours. Huge, huge. I love that. I love that. So going forward, we have the link in the description for everybody listening and watching wherever they're at. They can take this assessment for free. Like you said, don't mm-hmm. worry about passing it. Take your time, fill it out. No Facebook, no yeah. phone. After that, are you and I going to communicate? We'll see how many we get. And then we'll go from there as far as like taking it deeper with our group at ASFX and see if we can maybe build a little, a little, get that program going that we were talking about offline. Is that the the proper way? I think something like that would be great. Again, I want individuals to be able to take this assessment so that you can be able to learn on your own, but there are additional resources that we can give you. So if there's enough interest in terms of the next step, what we actually have is a free five-day challenge that you can go to. And this five-day challenge that you go through is designed for to do one thing. It is designed for when you sit down to trade for you to enter into the peak performance state at every level. So when you're getting into a trade, so your entries, having peak performance in your trade management, having peak performance in your exits, like being able to hit every single that's aspect big, man. of I like that. trade from beginning to end. And that's a five day challenge before there. the 30 day challenge. Yeah. So it's a, it's cool. a Monday. It's a, we sit together as a group, you know, there's usually, you know, whether it's a dozen of us or a few hundred of us or a few thousand that I've had in some of these five day challenges before, but we all go through together as a group and we optimize these specific oh, areas. I think, as a I think the guys are going to love that, man. I think they're going to love that. So listen, everybody watching, listening, wherever you're at, hit the link in the description. Get this filled out for us within the hopefully the first week of this getting put up, Marcus, and then we'll see what kind of interest we can get, and then we'll uh, we'll circle back and hopefully be able to make some some steps forward. But listen, man, I appreciate you reaching out to me to have me on your podcast. I appreciate you giving me the time now to do this video for my show. I am really looking forward to seeing you, your team, and Market Replay Live continue to grow in 2021. So I wish you nothing but success, brother. And again, I just really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. I hope the same for you as well, Austin. Absolutely, bro. And for everybody watching, make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you hit the link in the description to connect with Marcus and take the free assessment. And we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everybody.